So we've discussed that PaO2 measures dissolved oxygen, whereas SaO2 measures oxygen bound to hemoglobin. And these are obviously different. But the dissolved oxygen and the oxygen bound to the hemoglobin are in equilibrium, so they're certainly related. And in fact, if we plot PaO2 and oxygen saturation, we see that the relationship is sigmoidal, meaning it looks like an S. We call this the oxygen hemoglobin dissociation curve because it shows how much hemoglobin is associated or bound with oxygen and how much is dissociated at any given PaO2. And the fact that this plot is sitting here in front of you means if you know either the PaO2 or the SaO2, you know approximately what the other will be using this relationship. For example, a PaO2 of 60 millimeters of mercury is roughly equal to an SaO2 of 90%. And a PaO2 of 40 millimeters of mercury correlates with approximately a 75% saturation. Bear in mind that these relationships are not exact because the curve can shift under different conditions. Now, a result of this sigmoidal relationship is that if you had a PaO2 over 60 millimeters of mercury and you wanted to increase the total blood oxygen content, increasing the PaO2 would do very little because almost all the hemoglobin is already bound, is saturated, and we know that the hemoglobin is where most of the oxygen is. At 60 millimeters of mercury, there's only 10% of oxygen binding sites left. Increasing the concentration of hemoglobin, for example, by giving a blood transfusion, would be much more effective by providing more sites to which the oxygen could bind. And another result of the sigmoidal relationship is something we touched on in the last video. It's that it's possible to develop relative hypoxemia while the SaO2 remains within normal limits. For example, consider a patient with a life-threatening process requiring intervention. Maybe they have a PE or an evolving pneumonia, and that causes their PaO2 to drop from over 100 millimeters of mercury to less than 70 millimeters of mercury. If you are only assessing the oxygen saturation, the drop in the SaO2 might be quite small. It could still be significantly over 